Good day, math learners. I'm back. In this topic, we will discuss about meshes of variability. Variation scores. The results of a 20 item test show the following sets of scores for the two classes which each with 10 students. Okay, this will be the given data, 8 honesty. Those are the scores of the 8th honesty section. For the 8th unity, that will be. Now, the question is, in what ways are the two sets similar? Or the two given sets are similar? In what ways are the two sets are different? Based on the scores, which section performs better. We will see. In the given situation, both classes have the same mean and that will be 13. Since the two sections have the same mean, we cannot identify e easily which section performs better. Okay, how to get the mean? Remember in our past discussion, you will add all the values then divided by, by the number of data. So if we add up 5, 7, 12, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 16, 17, then divided by 10, the result is 13. And they are similar. The same mean. Same if you add 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, divided by 10, the result is also 13. That's why they have the same mean. In grade 8, unity, the scores are more clustered together. With a score at 16 and the lowest score at 11. Hence, we say that there is, uh, among the scores of the students of grade 8 and than in grade 8. So, they are, uh, it is, uh, grade 8 unity performs better than our grade 8 honesty performs better than in grade 8 unity. Measures of variability. Two or more sets may differ from each other, not just in the central tendency but also in the spread of the scores over the scale of measurement. When you say variability, it is a reflection of the individual differences between the people and events being investigated. When we say measures of variability, it describes how large the difference between individuals are on a trait. It's sometimes referred as a measure of dispersion. It refers to the spread or disperse of values about the mean. And last, that of the lowest or the low values of these measures means that the distribution is less than dispersed and clusters closer to mean while half values will be greater dispersion. The measures of variability of the spread values about the mean can also provide additional information about the data. Consider another example. The number of toys produced by 16 workers in factor A and factor B. This will be the given data for factor A and for factor B. The mean production of a factor A is sum of production over 16 is equal to 10.625. The mean production of factor B, if we add up all the sum of production over, the six, over 16 with the number of data, and that is equal to 10.625. As you can see, they have both, uh, they have the same mean. These two distributions differ in spread. The highest and the lowest productions in factor A are 15 and 8, respectively, while the highest and lowest productions in factor B is 12 and 9. Note that the variability of depression of the mean is less than factor B than in factor A. Range. 
To get the value of the range, the formula is highest value minus the lowest value. Consider the following example. The number of toys produced by 16 workers in factor A and factor B. Okay, same data. To get the range of the factor A, highest value of factor A is 15 and the lowest value is 8. So that's why 15 minus 8 equal to 7. For factor B, 12 minus 9. 12 minus 9 is equal to 3. That will be the range of our factor A and our factor B. Notice that the highest and the lowest production in factor A are farther from each other. And it is compared to the highest and lowest production in factor B. The range is easy to compute, but it, it is a less conven convincing measure of variability. Because it is usually used in the extreme values. This tells nothing about the spread of data between the extreme values. Now for the average deviation. <clears throat> when you say average deviation or mean deviation for ungrouped data, it is the average of the sum of the difference of each measure from the mean regardless of the sign. The value of the average deviation indicates the spread or the variability of the data. A large value means the observations are widely spread or scattered about the mean, while small value means that the observations are quite close to the mean. In symbol notation, the formula for the average deviation of ungrouped data is, this will be the formula for average deviation, the summation of x minus the mean over n. So we need to find the value of the summation of x minus the mean so that we can compute the average deviation because n is already given because n is the total number of data. Average deviation or the mean deviation, x is the given value. That will be the mean. n is the number of measurements or the number of data. Example number one. The table shows the number of toys produced by the two factories. Compute for the average deviation of each data. Okay, same data, factor A, factor B. Okay. For factor A, first thing we need to do is we need to solve first factor A. Step one, find the total number of values and N and solve for the mean of the given data. Okay, this will be factor A, the given for factor A. We need to find the mean of this data. To get the value of mean of ungrouped data, in our past discussion, we will add all the values of x. So 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 14 plus 15. Okay, or you can also add directly from, uh, from the given. Don't need to arrange if you want to get the mean over n, which is 16. The sum of all the values of x, that will be 170 over 16. 170 over 16, your answer must be in nearest hundreds. Or you, we will use two decimals. Okay, Run off your answer into two decimal places. So your answer is mean is equal to 10.63. Step 2, add two columns for the deviation and the absolute deviation. Please stay uh, please remember the values or the value of our mean because we will use that one. So, additional column that will be the x minus the mean and the second column that is added that is x, uh, the absolute value of x minus the mean. Step 3. Solve for the values in the third column, which is the deviation or the difference of the values and the mean. Okay, we will subtract the values of x minus the mean. It's just simply 8 minus mean that will turn to a negative 2.63. 9 minus 10.63, that will be negative 1.63. Same, same. Same, same. 
10 minus 10.63, that will be negative 0 0.63. Okay, save, save. 11 minus 10.63, that will be 0 0.37. So, 3, 11, they are same answers. For 12, 12 minus 10.63, that will be 1.37. 13, 2.37. 14 minus mean, 3.37. 15 minus the mean, 4.37. Step 4. Solve for the values in the fourth column. That will be the absolute value of x minus the mean. Even your answer is negative in the x minus mean table, the answer is always positive because of the absolute value. Okay? From negative 2.63, turn to positive. All the negative values here will turn to positive. All the positive values here will remain positive. Step 5. Find the sum of all the absolute deviations. So we will sum all of this one. We will add all the absolute value. That will be the summation of all this value is 25.26. Okay, if you add all the values for this one, that will make into 12.26. Step 6. Use the formula to solve the average deviation. Average deviation is the summation of x minus the mean or summation of absolute value of x minus the mean over n. So, substitute the value of the summation of absolute value x minus the mean. That will be 25.626. And our n is 16. And rounded off to the nearest hundreds or used two decimal places for our final answers. That will be AD or average deviation is equal to 1.58. For our factor B, we need to solve for the average deviation for that. The given data for factor B. Step 1. So, we need to get the value of mean. Same process. So, we add all the values of x here. Then, divided by 16. So, the total for this one is 170 divided by 16. Run off your answer to the nearest hundreds using your calculator. So, 170 divided by 16, that will be 10.63. Step 2. Add two columns, same, x minus the mean, and other column, absolute value of x minus the mean. Step 3. So, you subtract the value of your x minus the mean. So, 9 minus 10.63 is negative 1.63, same. 10 minus 10.63 is negative 0 0.63, so same. 11 minus 10.63, that will be 0 0.37, so same result, 11. 12 minus 10.63, that is 1.37. Step 4. Make all the values positive because of this absolute value. So, all the negative numbers here will turn to a positive number all the positive values here will remain as positive okay step five find the sum of all the absolute deviations of the summation of absolute value x minus the mean okay it means that you will add all the absolute values here Okay, and that will be our summation of absolute value of x minus the mean. And that will be the total of 14. Step 6, that's the time. We will use the formula to solve the average division because we already have this answer or we already have the summation of the absolute value x minus the mean and the value of n. Okay, using this formula, we substitute all the values here. So, 
that will be 14 for the summation of x minus the mean absolute and n is 16. So the 14 divided by 16, that will be 0 0.88. We need to run off our answer to the nearest hundreds. So uh, we concluded that the average division of factors A and B are 1.58 and 0 0.88 respectively. Since the average deviation of factor B is lesser than the average deviation of factor A, it means that the distribution of factor B is less dispersed and are closer to the mean than factor A. The lesser the dispersion, the better. Please take note for that. Again, the lesser the dispersion, the better. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to answer the given formative assessment. And also don't forget to click and subscribe. Thank you.